Hi guys, welcome to this module on Microsoft Project. What we're going to do today is look at some of the other views that you can get from the view bar or the menus. And the first one we're going to look at is the network diagram. So I'm going to click on the network diagram and there you see it. I can just zoom that down a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Now, these are preset tables that you can use. You can select different tables to show different information on this network diagram, but you can also create your own table, which is what I want to do now. So I'm just going to double click on the white area. And there you can see the different types of box that you can select. In my example, most of these are critical. So I'm going to leave it on critical, uh, but just to show you how this works, you have different data templates to select from that are preloaded. So that's the cost one, and then you can see the other ones there. And if I put that back to standard, you've also got the ability to create your own template, which is what I want to do there. Through this option, more templates. I'm going to click on new, and I'm going to just call this Steve. Now you can. Um, change the cell layout if you want. I'm just going to put this to, um, I'll leave it on three rows, but put it to two columns. Click OK to that. So first one I'm going to type is name for the task name. And you get a preview at the top there. Then I want um, percentage complete and actual cost. So that's what I would like for this particular template. Oh, that's OK if I click OK to that. Click OK, oh, close that box, and then apply that table from this drop down. You should see my name. And then that is shown in the preview box. If I click OK to that, that will then be applied to the relevant boxes. I would also need to select the same table for the for the milestone markers, but basically that is how you create your own table. Now the benefit of this network diagram is that it's not restricted by the timeline, which the Gantt chart is always restricted by this timeline scale. When you select the network option, you could print this off and it is not restricted by the timeline and also it's displayed as a flow chart, so some people find it a lot easier to follow. So that was the network diagram. The next one I want to look at, coming down this left hand side, is the task usage sheet. So there's a task usage sheet, or the view. Now, what you have in this view is a list of all the tasks. There's install software room one, I'm going to widen that. And then the resources allocated to that task and that task and so on. And on the right hand side, you have the allocation um, in terms of work hours for the people and then quantities for the material resources. And if I right click on this right hand side, I can actually see that there are other options I could select. For example, actual work. This then grows if I keep clicking that, cumulative work and so on and so on. And if I go to the format, tab at the top, you can see there is another option there that I could use to activate those features. Now, I find if you put too many things on the right hand side, it gets very difficult to look at. But what you do get in this view is the ability to double click on either the task or the resource. And if I just double click on the, the task, it does give you task information. If I double click on the resource, doesn't give you resource information in this particular view, it gives you assignment information. So you can see there that this is the assignment information for Anne. And on this particular task, she's doing eight hours. And then you have this feature here called work contour where it says flat. And then there you have a series of options there for different work contours. These are really used for um, when you're doing project planning and you're not quite sure of what the um, loading would be for a resource but you've got some sort of historical data or um, data from other sources that you can use and for example a backloaded resource would maybe a project manager doesn't do much during the, the, the initial planning phase of a project and then has a lot of work to do towards the, 
end of the project um, or vice versa that one front loaded does a lot of work to get it going doesn't actually do much on the project and then so on and so on you've got different different options there it is a tool to use to give you some sort of um, figures and some sort of costings um, and predictions but you need to be um, be careful with it so I'm just going to try and give you an example of it um, just cancel that off for a minute if I go into the Gantt chart and just create a um, task A say it's a 10 day task now if I assign um, who can I assign to this and I'll sign on to it doesn't matter about them being over allocated okay wrong column my fault and <clears throat> okay so Anne's assigned to that task so if I go into task usage you can see she's assigned for 80 hours 10 days 8 hours a day but if I double click on Anne and change that work contour to say backloaded watch what happens backloaded She's still assigned for 80 hours, but the duration has increased to 16 days. So that's what you've got to be aware of. Now, the, the calculations that it uses it spreads these figures across that range, depending on whichever contour you use. So I'm just going to undo that. What I would tend to do is manually set a, uh, a work contour by maybe going like this, two hours, two hours, two hours six hours six hours six 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 and so on and so on all the way to the end so you're not increasing the duration you're just adjusting the actual work working hours per day so that she if that was a project manager she might not be working the full eight hours a day on the project so that reflects that and that therefore you haven't increased the duration and you've you've adjusted the the work contour and you get the little symbol in the information column there saying this work assignment has been edited so that's task usage so the next one down or the next one i want to look at for coming down this list is the timeline I'm just going to click on the timeline now on the format tab it gives you some options there so you've got um, existing tasks so you can populate this with maybe your milestones one, room one complete room two complete project complete click here, click ok to that Uh, they're all sitting on top of each other at the minute. So let's just go and change some of these dates. 15th, 15th, they all finish on the same date. Okay, let's um, go back to the timeline and add some different tasks just to make it just separate slightly. So install software room one and train on software room two. Okay, and you start getting them populating on there. Now you've also got this um, the ability to add another time bar so I'll put that on and then on the second one this is going from the 13th to the 24th so if I click on that and just change that date range date range to this say just um, from the 13th I'll keep it on that just that week 13th to the 17th okay so that now becomes a smaller timeline and again you can add tasks on there maybe that one fits on there does it yeah okay so it's a bit of a visual thing now with timelines you've got the ability to copy them send them for email or doing put them into powerpoint through this button you've also got the option of changing the date format from this side and you've also got the option to add tasks so if i click on this one and add a task I'll just call this review and click OK to that so that review is sitting over there at the moment and if I go back to the Gantt chart that will have added the task review I'll just get rid of task A and then just get rid of that blank line um, if I say that review is going to be a one day task and it is going to follow task 10 so it's after the project, you're going to review the project. That sits there. And if I go back to the timeline, um, the reviews move to the end of the project. 
So that's the timeline, quick overview of the timeline. The next thing down I want to look at is a quick look at resource usage, which is very similar to task usage, except it is looking at looking at it from a resource perspective. So you've got Anne there and what Anne's on. She's on install software M1, so it works in the same way as task usage. Again, if you go to format, you've got the options to tick different things on. Um, if I double click on Anne, it takes me to resource information this time. If I double click on the task, that gives me the sign in from assignment information and that's where I can change the work contour. I'll just cancel that. So it's, it's identical to task usage except from a resource perspective. And one more I want to have a look at is the team planner. Now I'm coming down this view bar to get these views. View bar is not always on when you first get projects, so I always activate it. It used to be a great feature because it was a static feature, but now it's dynamic. So as you click on different views, they get added to this list, which is slightly counterintuitive and makes it more difficult to find things. So you end up going up to the top and using the different options from either resource or tasks. So you've got these things up there so the one I want is is actually the team planner so I'm just going to click on the team planner so this gives you a very visual indicator of where your people are and what they're doing and it's a very simple way of allocating a task to a person it's not great to allocate tasks to two people you would have to do that in your Gantt chart um, if I go back to the Gantt chart you can see that I've added contractors to those two tasks but um, it's very difficult to add um, two people to the same task you have to do it in this view and then the team planner would reflect that that's the team planner now there's an option there to do more views and you can also do more views from the top if I click on view and then you've got other views and more views in more views you are able to create your own view but first of all you can see that there are quite a few other ones preloaded that you can use but just so you can see how this works, I'm going to create a new view. I'm going to have a combination view, which means it's a split screen. Clicking OK to that. I'll just call it my name. And I will have the Gantt chart on the top. In fact, I'll have the detailed Gantt chart on the top. And then I will have the um, resource graph at the bottom. And then I'll click OK to that. And then I can apply... In fact, let me just edit that again. Did I tick? Yes, I did. Show in the menu so it appears over this side. And there it is, actually. If I click OK to that and then apply, that should split the screen. And then you get the resource graph at the bottom and the detail Gantt at the top. So at the moment, I can't see anything. So I'll just scroll to task so it brings things into view. So I'm on the paper resource for install software room one. Uh, but if I scroll back, in this case, I should go back through the different resources and if anybody was over allocated it would show me uh, on this side it would show in red at the moment nobody is over allocated so that's okay and if I want to remove that view uh, split I can just go back to view and details take that off but I've quickly got the ability by clicking Steve there to bring that back so it's something you would probably do when you're planning your project or allocating resources in your project so you can see what's going off and then Maybe take it off after that and get back to whatever you find easiest to, to use. It's all dependent, I think, by the size of the, the screen you're using. If you're on a laptop, sometimes it's quite difficult to have split screens. But if you've got a large monitor, that's fine. Now that's the end of this module, guys. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. And I'll see you soon. What I want to look at in this section is how to link project data into an Excel file and vice versa link data from excel into project so several different ways of doing it so i'll have a few different options to show you the first one though is straightforward paste link so if i want this data to be in an excel spreadsheet as an image but linked all i have to do is highlight the data copy it get myself into an excel file and then do use pay special so paste special, paste link, it's going to come in as a object like so. So it's 
nothing you can edit as it is there in Excel, but it is a live link. So if I go and change something in project, go back into project for a minute. So if I just put a figure there, one after that, that's a change, and then go back into Excel, that's been picked up there. Look, so it's a live link. So you could just give this to somebody. They've got an overall view of your, your project plan. It could be a summary plan you've just done this with, and they, they would see any changes immediate like, immediately like that. Now, if I just delete this for a second, so I think that's quite cool, that one. You can also just do copy and paste um, various elements. If I just highlight this data, just that much copy and just paste. But this is, this is just um, a detached list. You would then be using doing this if you was going to use Excel to manage a project. But if you've got projects, it's not an advisable thing to do. So that is also something you can do. And a third thing you can do is from project, you can use what's called a project map and map certain fields to go into Excel. So that's what I want to do now. And the way you do this is you go file, save as. Browse. I'm going to put this on my desktop. Um, instead of having it as a project file, you select um, Excel workbook and then you save it. It's already there, so I'll just overwrite it. This wizard starts and then you go through the wizard. Let's go to this. I'll create a new map so you can see how that process works. I want to do it just for tasks. If you ticked all of these options, you'd basically get three sheets in Excel. But you, you can do that if you want, but I'm just going to do the first sheet and then next, and then it gets you basically to map your field. So um, the first field is normally the ID field. And then I want um, name start. Now there are some pre um, set maps that you can pick duration probably did that the wrong way around but never mind and um, percentage complete that'll do for now um, next i'm going to save that map call it steve already got one there look save and then you can just go finish and then that will drop that onto your desktop I'll just minimize this and software implementation is there and when you open that, there's your unformatted. If I just widen this up, so it's an unformatted spreadsheet, and you will have to fix this list, for example, because it's coming in as text. So it's basically store this or convert this to a number, and then you can set that to a percent. And that's what you've got data exported out like so. You can also bring data back into projects from Microsoft Excel. Just turn this off. What you have to do is select the data. Now it has to be in the same order as the columns in project, otherwise it causes a bit of grief. So I'm just gonna miss out that column. So I'll just copy this data and then back into project. I've got myself a blank file. So I'm under the task name. So I'll go paste special and link and there is text data I want so that should drop it in I'm just going to ignore that and just continue okay and then it drops it in it's um, put constraints on so you'll have to go into advanced maybe to knock this off um, and then indent this stuff as you would normally do but let's just go back into Excel and see what happens if we change any of this so it's coming up there. Now, because I've messed about with that, let's just go back into Excel, change something. Let's change, um, let's change this. In fact, let's change that to three days. So you've got to put three days because it's going to be going into, back into project. So three days on that. And then it's changed there already. No, I don't. 
So that's gone to, let's put that into auto scheduled. So now let's pick that up. Let's just widen this a little bit. So because this is linked, you, you can't um, edit the data. I've just double clicked on that and it's brought me straight through to Excel. If I go back into project, um, this is a live link. So whenever you do pay special in Microsoft, it does exactly that. If you double click on something, it opens up the original source data. But if I change something else in here, so if I just say PO instead of PO received, so I'm making a change and then back into project, I should have picked that up and it has done. Now, obviously this is a scenario where you've got people with projects and they want the functionality of project, but most people have got Excel. So, so rather than buying multiple licenses of Microsoft project, you can just get people to update tasks in Excel. And if you've got them linked to various project files, the project files will update, but you can see on mine, uh, what's happening is this is automatically going back to um, manually scheduled all the time. So let me just check that again. If I just go back into, um, I'll just put one there. And if I go back into project, it will have updated it and it has put that back to manual schedule, scheduling, even though the days have not changed because the scheduling is not being driven by project. It's being driven by Excel. So you can just be aware of that and because that is the correct duration there, five days for this project. But again, it's totally up to you how you want to work that. So that's just a quick look at how you can link data from project into Excel and then from Excel back into project and with a few things that could possibly go wrong or you need to be aware of if you're going to do this. I think sending data from project and linking it into Excel is a, a good feature, doable. Coming back the other way from Excel into project, I'd be a bit more nervous if I was a project manager working in project that that data was accurate um, and I'd want to do, double check everything. But that's the end of this session. Hopefully you enjoyed that and I'll see you on the next one. In this module, I want to have a look at sprints, using sprints and boards. If you're used to using um, projects using Agile or Kaiban or Scrum, you may be more familiar with boards than this sort of list. So in project, you can activate those features. So first of all, let's go and get the sprint. So go view, other views, more views, and Sprint planning board is what I want. In fact, planning sheet, sorry, apply that. So it's come up with a sprint column. There's no sprints allocated, so I need to add some sprints. So when you come into this, you've got one sprint, two weeks duration, but if I want to add, put this down to add sprint, add, add, just change a few of these, add, add, and so on and so on. So you just create your sprints there, and you've got your start and finish dates that you can change if you so wish, but I'm just going to leave everything as default for now. Click OK to that. Now, as soon as you do that, you see this tab appear, Sprints, where you've got a task board, which tells you um, percentage complete, etc. And you can set that. If I just set this to 25, set complete 50. And that's 100. Let's add a new column. Still going. And set the complete to 75 on that one. So obviously that's now in the wrong place. So if I right click on that, I can move it to the left and then it's in the right sequence. So that's how you can do that. And then these basic would just move across and you would just drag and drop these. And if I right click on these, you can um, mark these as 100% complete. You can double click into it, you can delete them, you can assign resources. Well, resources are already um, on there, you can see that already. Now, if I go back to the next one, planning. So these are the sprints that you've set up. Uh, these are the tasks that you've got. So they're the same tasks as that you have in your Gantt chart, but now you've got them 
um, in your sprint, which I can't find now. That's it. That's it. Okay. Um, you can add these views into this list. That's what I was looking for there because um, I've already done this once and I put them all down here. So basically, you're, it's a case of putting the, these across into the relevant sprints that you've set up. Um, it's just a case of dragging and dropping them, really. And you don't have to allocate them to a sprint. I'll just do do that bit. Um, manage, that will take you back to um, this percent's complete option, and then that will allow you to add extra sprints. Okay, so what I've done is, in sprints, I've noticed that this one is set to April. That's why nothing's coming up on the first sprint. So I, I should have changed the project start date. And this is probably going to cause a bit of grief now if I try, try and change this to today. Mm, nothing's jumped out at me, but this probably has caused a bit of grief. If I go into manage, it hasn't changed that first date, but I'll put that to... Let's put that to the 19th of October. Monday the 19th of October. So they've all changed now. So that should um, fix that. But that's why there's been nothing coming on to Sprint 1. So if I go into the plan planning sheet, I've put everything back to no Sprint. So I'm just going to go back through that. Um, I'm not going to use Sprint 1 because obviously it's gone into the past. So starting off with sprint two. So these are gonna be on sprint two, for example. Then this one is gonna be sprint three, sprint three. And these are just gonna follow on four, five, six. And the last one can be six as well. Now, obviously you can set as many as these up. These are weeks, remember, you can set these up to multiple weeks. So you may not have that many sprints, but um, if I click onto the sprint, the current sprint is sprint two. If I go to, so that's today's date. That's why it's coming up with that. That's in the past. Sprint three, there's only a couple of tasks on there. Well, I've got a sprint six because there's two on there as well. So then you can, Go to the current sprint board, which will show you only the tasks that are due this week. And then you can move these across into the relevant place. And if I go to no sprint, it just shows there's nothing in no sprint. And then back to this one. Back to manage if you need to add extra ones. And then if I go to the task board, you can then start moving these around um, if they're complete. Now, if I right click on these, I've already shown you this, but you can mark them complete there. But if you do mark them complete, you should have moved them into that column there. But if I go back to um, current sprint board, this is really where you should be doing this. So this is the stuff for this week. So if I say that is complete, you get a little tick coming up as soon as I drop it in there. And I'll come across and, and do that and say that's complete as well. And I get another little tick. So basically, you're using projects, not really using the Gantt charts as um, your main driver, but you are using, I'll just get the task to come back across. You're using the boards through the sprints tab to update things. You can see it's already updated them in there. They weren't done like that before, but now because I've moved them across on here and saying they're complete, they, they are complete. And if I go back to the current sprint this week, you can see that those two are showing there. So basically using the sprint feature, you are, you are creating a sort of filter for your project plan and you're only looking at the, the tasks that are allocated to that particular sprint. And then the board will um, allow you to see how everything is going all together but the sprints you can isolate like so there's that warded tenders completed 
and if I just put that across there as well, that'll complete. So that should now have made four tasks complete on the Gantt chart, which it has done, which is great. So it's a different way of working in projects, but it's all to do with how you work as a project manager and what you're used to. Um, some people find working like this with a Gantt chart quite difficult. It's not easy to see, where when you're looking at sprint boards, it's a lot more easier to see and you're only looking at a small element. I suppose the downside for me would be you're not looking at the big picture perhaps, whereas in a Gantt chart you can have multiple projects linked in and you are seeing a big picture. Although the boards themselves, it's just how, you, how your mind works, I suppose, what you find easier. But that's all I wanted to show you, how to get the sprint. So just a quick recap, you went through the view tab, other views, more views, and then the sprints are in here. Sprint board, sprint planning board. But as soon as you create some sprints, your sprints tab will activate and then you can use it. Uh, depending on what version of project you've got, you may already have the boards uh, down down here. And for those who do stuff with me or, or follow me, you know that I always right click and tick this view bar on. I just find it easier to um, see this list. However, having said that, it does get a bit cluttered when you start adding lots of different views in, but it's it's what you're used to, I suppose. But this this sprints tab gives you all, all that you need to need to see really. You've got the um, former options. You can customize these cards to show extra fields. Um, so you can tick that. Well, well, let's do percentage complete actually in there, so you can see it, even though you're putting it into a column. And then I'll say what the actual start date was. That's a nice one to know. So you've got five extra five extra columns that you can put in here. I always like to see actual cost, actually. So if I click OK to that, the boxes are going to get bigger. The cards are going to get bigger. Um, but you now see extra information. Looks better. I'm liking that a lot. Very pretty. Let's put that in there, eh? All right, but that's the end of this little session on sprints and cards. So I hope you've enjoyed that, and I'll see you on the next one. In this module, I want to have a look at two things. One, how you can embed project files into a master file, and two, how you can use Paste Special to link project data into a master file. So first of all, in this file, I want to type master at the top, leave myself a line space, go to the projects tab, click on sub project, and then that gives you access to your computer. So the first one I want is move house, double click on that, leave a line space, and then do the same thing again, sub project, flood defense, like so. Now if I indent these two, the duration will be picked up at the top 28 days total duration on these two projects, and you get the timeline on the right there on your Gantt chart, for these two projects. Now, if I click on these little arrows, that will expand each of these projects and you can see the detail on each of these projects. What you're doing here is you've created a master file, but you can actually work on these projects through this master file. But you can also work on these projects in isolation by just opening the source file and working away on it. Because this is a live link, any change made at either end will be reflected at the other end. Now, if you want to link files like this in a master file, you can do between projects this is. So if I click on that and then hold my control key down and click on allocate funds and then click the chain link, you can see there's a link there now with a file path. That one there is a file path. It's telling me where that is and it's linked it and the whole project has moved to the end of the first project. I'll just delete that off so it all comes back over. I'm not saying that's the way I would personally work, but that's the way you could work. So you're just saying that that project is following this one. This one's got to be completed first. If I close these down, you've just got the timelines at the top there of these two projects. And that's the quickest way of doing it. And if you're a project manager, you could have multiple sub projects in one file, uh, avoid the hassle of having to run around to individual files and folders to find details of projects. You can just do it from one place. Now, quite often in project management, you don't want the whole 
project file to be available you may only want a a line it may be a a key piece of equipment or key process that needs to be uh, reported up the chain uh, but not all of this detail i'm sure the the boss doesn't want to know when you emptied the bins but this sort of thing there allocate funds maybe when was that done that particular line of information you might want so the second way of doing this is not to have all these so i'm just going to close this down not save it not at all get myself a blank file what i'm going to do is create two projects project a with two tasks in each task a and task b and then i'm going to indent those two tasks and give myself a duration like so just link them on number two so that's a 50 day project and i'll save this as project a so i know where it is project a where's that going documents that'll do i'll get myself a new one so this is going to be project b project b task a and task b indent those two give them some durations 45 and 33 days link them together two so now we've got two projects both with a, a timeline at the top there this one's 78 days i can't remember what the other one was but it doesn't matter what you then do is you create a third file this is your master file you you save it as master but i'm not going to bother saving this i'm just going to type it in like that and you do exactly the same um you bring the files in but this time we only want one line of the file so if i highlight project a that line copy control c come back into uh, the master file i should have named that project b that's the master file and highlight the line and you use paste special paste link and that comes in and then you do the same for project b which i didn't name which is that one highlight the title copy come back over into the master file highlight the row use paste special paste link okay and then you indent those two it gives you a, a timeline at the top 78 days and if i go back into any of these projects so i'll go into project b and change that to 66 days so that's gone to 111 come back to my master project and let's pick that up and again you can just you can just follow these on as well so that's um a slightly easier way i think to bring specific roles of information in from a large project you might just want a few roles key reporting lines and you can also do this if i double click on project a it actually goes into project a anyhow so you get the benefit of going into the the, the source file by just double clicking um you haven't got all the information sitting in the master file so it doesn't clutter you up and i think it's a, a good tool to use to do reports on so you can then go into reports and create reports based on this information and uh, send that up the chain to whatever management level you need to send it to so there's two different ways of doing it inserting the sub project or using pay special and bringing individual lines in but both ways it's a great way to manage multiple projects so that's all i want to talk about in this session so hopefully you enjoyed that thank you for your time what i want to cover in this module is how to link an excel spreadsheet into a project plan and there are several ways i'm going to show you how to do it so first of all to embed a excel an excel spreadsheet into a task you basically just double click on the task go on to the notes area I suggest you give it a title so if I call this um, config or something so you know what it is give yourself a little space the reason I need a title is um, otherwise you don't get anything in this column you just get that symbol which is obviously not telling you anything you then click on this option insert object create from file in this case browse for a document that you want so if I go up to examples get myself an excel file let's get charting now i'm going to link this so any changes that are made 
outside of project in Excel, I will see them. If I open the file through project, it will be a live update I do. And just in case I might want to add more than one file, I'm going to tick this option, which says display as icon. Otherwise, the whole file will be open and if I've got two files, I'll have to scroll all the way down to the bottom to get to the second one. Click OK. And there it is. And if I open that by double clicking it, there is the Excel file and I can edit that as normal. And it is the same as it, where everybody that's got access to this file would see the changes I made. Just close that one down. Didn't do anything. Click OK to that. And then you get a symbol which now says config, configuration file or whatever method statement process. That's why you need to put the title. Otherwise, you just get that little apostrophe you can see hanging at the bottom there, which doesn't really help. And also remember, you don't always see this information column in every table view. I'll just show you that if we're going to costs, for example, you don't see that column. So you need to be in one of the views that has the information column or you add it yourself to whichever view you like to use. Now, another way to do that is if I just double click on room one complete and call this one budget, give myself a space, click the same button. This time I'm going to create new, that one. I still want it to display as an icon. So I'll tick that, click OK. So now it opens up Excel and I'm, I'm now able to use Excel inside this task. So this is attached um, to projects. And if I just make this full screen for a second, it says worksheet in software implementation. I don't actually need to save this, this spreadsheet unless I want to save it outside of project. It will just live in side project. So I tell people when I'm doing courses that you could use this as a a little budget reckoner if you wanted to for a particular task or a series of tasks or on a summary task. Um, so I'll just do a little three item sheet. So date, um, amount, so I'll do item there, not amount, item. So today's date, control semicolon, I'll just pull it down to three dates, so we've got three dates. So item, we can say hotel, because as you get into projects, you'll notice if you use the cost field, when you do a project that's 100, a task that's 100% complete, it doesn't spend the cost amount, it sits there at the end. Whereas if you do it like this and just put a fixed cost in, it will actually spend it when you do 100% corn complete. So if I just say the hotel was one, two, three, four, 50 quid for fuel and 20 pound for food. Key command at the bottom to add that up. Alt equals, press enter, adds it up for you. Just format all that to pounds. There you go. Close this down. Click OK. You get the same symbol with the title. And if I double click, go back into my worksheet. There it all is. So I didn't even have to save it. It's there. If I did save it, like I said, that would then be on your network or wherever you put it as well. And it'd be more like a linked file. We'll close that one down, close this one down. Now the other thing that you can do in project, so that's bringing Excel in, into the tasks. You can actually bring Excel into the Gantt chart. And what I mean by that is you can bring a graph into the Gantt chart. So if I highlight all of this, for example, and copy it, go back into project and select paste. It doesn't like that. Let's drop that in as tasks. And I don't want that, so I'll undo that. If I click on this side and try and paste, it just does the same thing. So I don't want that. But what you can do is copy the graph. Copy the graph. Come back into project. Go up to the um, task tab. Paste special. Paste link is what I want. And this will put this on, you've got the option there as an icon. Puts it on the Gantt chart, so you can see it there. And because that's linked, any changes I'm making to the Excel file 
Um, so I'll just get rid of this big figure here. Um, which one's that? 88. Put that down at 1. So that's changed. Um, and that's changed on there as well. 1. So it's linked. Now obviously that's not great. So what you can do is you can create yourself a view. So I'm going to save this view. So I'll go to view. Other views. In fact, I'm not going to save it as a view. I'm going to save it as a table. Save fields as a new table. And I'm going to call that chart. Okay. And then I'm going to get rid of them all. Deleting all these off. I'm going to leave one on there. So just bring that and bring this up into the top corner like so. Now I could create a view on this. So now if I go to a different table entry, this chart is still going to be there. And if I move these back across, the, the columns are still there. So you've got that option. I'm not too keen on that, to be honest. And if, if I look down this left hand side, I can see I've got a view called chart view. So there is one I did earlier where you can see I've got rid of all the um, tasks that are still sitting there. It's just no columns. And I've created a view. If I go to views, more views. So that's called chart view. There it is. I'm on it. I can't see it for looking. What you have to do is create a table without any columns in it. So let's get rid of all these columns. But first off, I'll just need to save this as a table. Save fields as a new table. I'll call it Saxo. And then I'll get rid of all of these. And then I need to paste special, well, I can do that afterwards. So then what you've got to do now is create a view that's going to look at this table. So go to views, more views. Now I need to go into organizer and get um, tables. That one I just did, Saxo so copied across into the global copy. So make sure it's in there. There it is. Then I can close this. So now I've got a, a new view option. So single view I want. And I'll call it test. It's going to be a Gantt chart view, but you've got all these. Oh, it's going to use the Gantt chart screen, but you could use any of these. Table is going to be called Saxo, and there it is. And you need to select a group, so I don't want any grouping, no group. And the all, all tasks filter. Click OK to that. OK, test one. Test one, apply. And then now I should be able to do paste special paste link because I've still got it copied from before and there it is and then you can just move that across and then that is a view like this one so if I go back up to view come down more views find test one apply there's the one I've just done. So it's not the best way to use um, Excel, but it is a, a feature that is available. Um, what I've done in the past is just basically drop that in on the project plan here. So you can just see it underneath. But if you've got a huge project plan, it won't work. So it's more to do with when you've got a master project, where you've got lots of projects that you can collapse and then you can put a, maybe a budget spreadsheet or budget graph at the bottom so it gives you a bit of a picture in terms of spend 
rather than flicking between the reports. It's just personal preference and whatever you want to display. But those are the three ways that you can link Excel through the task itself, through um, a task with a link to an Excel file or just a straightforward Excel file. Or you can go through this process of copy and paste special a chart onto the Gantt chart itself. And if you want, then go on to create a, a view um, of that chart. So that's all I want to talk about in this particular session. So hopefully that was of use to you and I'll see you in the next one. In this module, I want to show you how you can sync this project file with a SharePoint site and then, and then how you can get that SharePoint site into a Teams channel. So first of all, on the screen, I've got a small project called Product Development. What I need to do, I've saved this, and what I need to do is go File, Save As. And you can see you've got the option there, Sync with SharePoint. So I'm going to click on that. Then this screen comes up, so you've got New SharePoint Site. I don't want to create a new site, I want to use an existing one. And then you've got this option coming up, and there are a few other options in there. But that's the one I want. Then you verify the site, and it gives you the option then to name the list. So I'm going to call this products. Just call it products, put a capital P on there. And then you just click save. So that's now saved. If I go onto the SharePoint site, and just refresh this task list or this site contents I should see products there it is and if i click on products you've got product development which is the name of the project and if you click on that it should open up the tasks and you can see the tasks there now if i go back into project if i just add a new task if i just add a review task in there so two days and just link it to the end there. So it goes at the end. So at the moment that is not synced. So it's still still as it was there on the pro, the actual um, SharePoint site. So if I go back and go file save as, sync again and just save it like that. It will sync it on the SharePoint site. Just refresh this. And there you can see it's been synced there. You've got that there. You can actually add things on the SharePoint site. So if I just put test at the end there, give it a date. Just move this across a little bit so you can see some of the other columns. And then a due date, 3rd of March. All the rest of it can stay as it is. So you've got that at the end there. Now, when I go back to project, if I go file, save as, sync, save, it's brought test at the top there instead of the bottom, but it's now showing you that. So anything that you add in this view will appear once you do the, um, the sync option. So if I go file, save as, sync, save. Let's put that in there. So that's how you can get this project file onto a SharePoint file and have it synced. Personally, I just um, have it work in one way just to make sure everything's okay. If I delete something, so let's have a look at doing this. Um, let's delete something on this. Let's delete those two tasks that I just did. And if I go file save as again, sync. It now comes up and asks me, how do I want to handle this? Do I keep the SharePoint version or do I keep the project version? So. I want to keep the project version and again so for both tasks now if I go back to SharePoint review that refresh that they've gone so we're back to square one so now what I want to do is I want to get this into 
my team site. So I've got my team site down here. So what I'm going to do is um, add an extra section. Uh, I need a website option because I'm going to paste the website in. So I'll call this products as well. Put a capital P on it. Now what I need to paste in here is the URL from that SharePoint site. So if I go back to the SharePoint site and just copy this, copy that, and then paste it into this, and then save. I should see that coming through onto a team site. So I'm on the training channel on my teams, Steve's team site, and there's a link to that project, and you can see it there. So you basically, just to recap, you create your project plan, you save it as normal, and then you want to sync it to SharePoint. So you go File, Save As, Sync with SharePoint, Save, and then that will save any changes. And if you want that available in your team site, you just copy the web address and paste it in on the, um, the website app on your team site, as you can see there. So I've got one there, I think, project plans. I'm not sure what that is. That's just an actual project site. So that's how, uh, if you created a new site option when you did sync to SharePoint, this is what it does. It creates it creates this. It creates an actual, an actual site for you. Uh, that would be on there. So training, I think that's not a site, that's just a, a list. But you get an extra site, so it wouldn't be on the communication site, it would be on a whatever you called the site. I haven't got one set up, so I can't show you. But that's all I want to talk about in this particular session, so hopefully it was of use to you, and I'll see you on the next one.